There are a lot of reasons why picking up a new tabletop game can be a bit of hard work. You have to learn a new rule system, you have to paint a whole bunch more models, and you have to buy those rules and models. Some game systems are prohibitively expensive to get into, and some are prohibitively complicated. So when I came across Bolt Action, a 28mm hero scale historical war game set in World War II, I was pretty interested. The rules seem simple, the plastic infantry model seemed like a really good price for starting an army, and cheapest of all, it seems, are the Soviets. Hi, I'm Edsgar, and today I'll be looking at the Warlord Games Soviet Infantry Summer and Winter versions. At recommended retail price, both of these boxes work out to about £1 per model, far cheaper than some other game systems. But with regular discounts and some check-in of second-hand sales, I got these for less than half of that. Breaking open the box greeted with a great many sprues, and more models than in some starter sets. The variety of options here is pretty impressive. Plenty of arms in different poses, separate weapon sprues with a few different options and plenty of them. Importantly, there's a picture here with all of the pieces labelled, which should be really useful for lining up arms and weapons correctly, but I'll mention that again later on. Well, I also picked up some of the winter sprues, so that I can add to the variety of models, and the winter sprue is equally varied in head and arm options, and it comes with the same separate weapon sprues. I'll get into some maths in a separate video, but just to keep a quick comparison short, there are five models on each sprue for their respective season, summer or winter, and there's another three with quilted uniforms that are the same on both. Eight models per sprue, five sprues per box, 40 models, and that is a lot to get started with. Well, that's enough for looking, let's get building. And me being me, I'm starting with the odd one out. This prone body in the summer sprue has a separate leg option. Now I've seen models with separate legs, of course, and just about every plastic kit has arm and head options, but very rarely is there a leg option in this way. The way it works is you put the prone body down onto the longer base and pick out which of the legs you'd like. There's one sticking out and one slightly bent, and this is a, such a small thing, but it lets you add some variety when you're making a team of two prone models so that they don't just look identical. I chose to make this model up with an anti-tank rifle. Shown in the picture here, it is a PTRD-41, an acronym for the Russian term Anti-Tank Rifle Degturev. And there are arms on the picture for prone anti-tank rifle, which are separate but correctly numbered. I quickly found that the plastic of the bodies and arms sprue is on the softer side of polystyrene models, which sometimes can make cleaning mold lines a little difficult, but in this case they are so shallow and mostly well placed that they can clean up very, very easily. The gun and its tiny, tiny bipod I was worried about. How could I clean up mold lines on something so tiny? Well, it turns out that the mold lines here are nearly invisible. I wonder if this is a deliberate attempt to use higher quality molding technique for the gun sprue, as the barrels for them are so thin. To be clear, there are mold lines on the guns, but they are significantly smaller than on the body's sprue. With a few drops of poly cement, the gun, its bipod, and the right arm were assembled easily. The hand and the arm are positioned just right to line up with the grip and stock of the rifle and another spot of cement to attach the arm to the body, and I left the body lying down so that everything lines up correctly. This process is a little fiddly. The bipod particularly is quite small, but there's enough leeway in the shoulder and the parts do line up if you are careful. They are way easier to build than an FX kit, but harder than Lego. This is the sort of kit that's often labeled as being for older people who have the time, patience and skill, not for those kids. But realistically, I was making far more difficult models than this when I was eight, so don't believe any of that nonsense. I also made up a summer soldier with a Mosin carbine, one of the rifle options, with a pair of advancing rifle arms from the summer arms selection, which all seem to be correctly marked. With these arm options and the guns separate, the best option for building these is to glue the dominant hand, in this kit, 
all of them are right hands, to the grip of the rifle, and then that arm to the torso, and finally gluing the other arm on, lining it up with the rifle and the shoulder. Turns out these models go together pretty well, and pretty fast. Nearly as soon as I could blink I had made 16 models, finishing a sprue each of summer and winter. My winter prone body got a sniper rifle, and I could say that the mold lines on the winter sprue are mostly the same quality as the summer, but the texture of the Yushankas, the fur hats, makes it a little more difficult to clean up some of the mold lines on the heads. I mentioned that there are three quilted uniform bodies on both the summer and winter sprues, and they are the same, in fact identical. But with the variety of arms, weapons and heads, it's not too hard to make them appear different. However, I picked up on one very important thing that might be causing people some issues with this set. The quilted rifle arms aren't matched correctly on the leaflet. To me, it appears that instead of being paired by the numbers, they should be oppositely paired. I've coloured these to try and show what I mean. I recommend the same process as I mentioned before, but with an extra step. Once the right arm is glued into place, go through all of the left arms and hold them up until you find one that fits correctly, and then glue that in place as normal. With all of the arm options, you'd have to go to some effort to make them look identical by picking the exact same pieces when you built each one. I had some fun with the winter greatcoats, giving them PPSH-41 submachine guns and DP-28 light machine guns. Bringing the firepower through the cold, there isn't an intended arm set for a standing model with the DP-28, so I used a rifle arms pair, which does mean that this guy is going to get some hot brass from that bottom ejection port. There's also other bits, like an officer's cap and a pointing hand, so you can make an officer from one of the plastic sprues without having to buy the metal one. And that's actually pretty nice, but it makes it cheaper for you to get started. Realistically, I think it's intended that a lot of these conversion options are in the kits. You get fire bottles and anti-tank grenades for the tank hunters, as well as an anti-tank rifle and captured Panzerfaust. There's snipers, light machine guns, parts for officers and binoculars to signify an observer, and it wouldn't take much to convert a medic either. If you could find the heavy weaponry like a Maxim gun, field guns and that sort of thing, you can use these plastic models as the crew without any issues. I got so caught up in this train of thought that I went through the Armies of the Soviet Union book to try and find any infantry model that I couldn't make. And yes, I did find a couple, but you can easily make nearly everything, and certainly enough for a playable game out of just one box. And getting caught up in the maths like I was, which I will spare you the details of, but here is one way of playing 40 models using only one of the boxes. It might not be a good army, in fact it's pretty terrible, but it is valid for the rules. And if you were to throw in a tank to bump it up to a thousand points, you'd be playing a standard sized game. So getting started with bolt action, with one box of infantry, one tank, and the rule book, which does contain the standard army list for some of the factions, is pretty cheap, and that's before considering the army boxes and two-player starter boxes. However, just building some of the models isn't the whole story, and whilst I'm not a snob and will happily play with and against unpainted models, for the video we should probably paint at least some of them. I thought I had a really smart idea to prime these models in tan, as it would be the fundamental colour for the Soviet army's colouring. However, this paint is quite a bit lighter than I had expected. Not much of an issue, I just have to paint more into the shadows rather than painting into the highlights. I picked out one model each of summer and winter sets and started with this soldier with great coat and the papasha. I wondered how dark I should go with my painting and the shadows, so this model will act as a testing ground. Starting with a shadow of another tan paint, which appeared more yellow and made the primer appear more white. But sticking with it and filling in under any fold and crease where the shadow would fall didn't fill me with much confidence, so I also filled in the base coat for the skin, the leather, the wood and the metal, which really helps with seeing the piece as a whole. Still too light overall, I used a brown wash very thinly to coat the entire model, and this will paint the highlights from the primer and my painted in shadows, making everything richer and darker. 
and surprisingly, this worked really well. And just a touch up to the skin and metal afterwards, uh, that was all it took. I tried a slightly different technique on the summer uniform, this chap with the carbine that I showed earlier, and filled in the entire shirt with my sand paint. Again, filling in the wood, the leather and the skin, it still needed the brown wash to darken everything up, but it looked pretty good after that. Just a little extra details to make the skin look like actual skin, and some minor highlights on the leather, and another model is complete. This is very basic, very simple and quick painting scheme for an army. I could easily spend two or three hours painting one of these up really nicely. But these only took 20 minutes each, and if you like batch painting, it could be even quicker. Ah, and I mustn't forget the red star for the red army. Well, I've talked around myself in a meandering ramble, and I think I've covered all of my thinking points. But there's one thing that came up after I finished recording. The next day, I went ahead and just painted a bunch more models, including some from a third and a fourth sprue, and I really enjoyed it. It might be because I've painted a lot of black and green recently, so tan is a nice refreshing change. But there's certainly something about these sculpts that makes an easy paint job like I'm doing here very enjoyable. I should probably slow down and pay a little more attention to the painting so that at least some of them look a little better, but these are absolutely fine for the tabletop. But with all that said, I'm Edgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.